How's it going, friends? Sean Don coming back with a, another technical analysis. Here we have Louise Hampton, a Masters athlete from uh, the UK, I believe. So, yeah, before we get into today's video, I just want to let you guys know that I'm getting back into the online coaching YouTube scene. So if you're watching this video and you're wondering, what can I do to make my technique better? I wish Sean Don would review my video and make me throw farther. Uh, go to my website, www.gripandrip.co. That's right. So go there, get a technical analysis, get some online coaching programs, sign up, and we can work together and I'm going to help you achieve your goals because that's what I love to do. So without further ado, let's take a look at Louise's throw. That audio is not good. I had to screen record the video uh, to get this video that I could download to my computer so there will be no sound. Um, yeah, so Louise is saying she has trouble feeling kind of the, the pull or the tension from the hammer, which uh, at first glimpse, if you kind of look at uh, her arms, you can see there's just a lot of tension in the arms, which is kind of understandable. Um, usually the biggest fix for that for me that I recommend is uh, using some sort of grip agent because the tighter you have to grip your hands, the tighter your arms are going to be. Um, but beyond that, I'm going to help her break some things down and, and fix uh, some stuff in her technique. So we go back to the winds. All right, so she's left-handed. So that being said, there will be some, you know, mix-ups in terms of saying left-handed, right-handed, all that stuff. But I'm getting better. I do coach more lefties now than I think I ever have. So um, should get pretty good, I, I hope. Uh, but, yeah, so starting the winds, square the back of the circle. Um, as you can see, the very first move, Louise, is the hammers just out of frame off to your left. Uh, and the first thing you do is bring the hands across the body. So this is a thing that I've seen a lot uh, recently with a lot of throwers that I've kind of figured out. Uh, that this kind of pull across the body, left to right, or right to left in your case, uh, kind of just already sets things off on the wrong tone in terms of where the energy is going and setting up connection. Uh, so I'd rather see you start with the ball kind of back uh, towards the front of the circle in the direction of, let's say, this cage door or the shadow back here at the front of the ring. Start with the ball back there, and then think about bringing the ball forwards, straight forwards instead of uh, left to right. Okay, so you want to go from back to front, not left to right in this very first preliminary swing, which make, makes a big difference uh, from what I've seen. Um, so that's kind of the first thing. Bring the ball around. And you can see you're kind of facing the back of the circle. You need to open up and face the face the left side of the circle a little bit more. So face kind of what would be that left, or sorry, uh, well, I guess your left or this right kind of uh, side of the cage over here. Uh, camera view right. But uh, yeah, so you're, face, you're facing the front of the circle as you bring the ball left to right up over your head. Your winding mechanics in terms of the upper body are fine. Your lower body looks okay could be a little bit more down in the legs, kind of more athletic stance. It looks like they're a little bit straight. Um, and then you are opening up to the left better here. But then as you come back to zero, you're square to the back of the circle. Yeah, square to the back of the circle again. And then you can see your left arm is coming very far across the body. You're winding a little bit too far to your right side. Uh, which, like I said, kind of starts with that very first uh, preliminary swing or the, the start of the first wind, um, which just kind of makes it hard to connect a little bit earlier. And if you can't connect early, then yes, of course, you're not going to feel the pull of the hammer or the tension from the hammer. Um, so if we look at this second wind the entry, opening up to the left, and then I want I want you to pay attention to your arms as you go through entry. So you are pretty stable here with this right side in terms of entry. Like you keep it pretty stable through the ball going through zero. But you can see the big thing is left arm or right arm is straight here, left arm is bent, that's fine. But then as you go through entry right here, this isn't the best camera angle, but you know, like you said, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, and you can see that the arms are tight. There is a bend in both elbows 
which that is going to be the number one thing that hampers feeling the connection from the hammer. Um, so the biggest thing is going to be straightening out those arms. So off this second wind and really in both winds, like I said, I want more emphasis on facing the left side, opening up to the left, and then reaching this, either your right arm, reaching your right arm as far to your left as possible. Like I said, kind of reaching for that cage, that right side of the cage. And then, so either the left arm or the, the right arm, or vice versa, sorry, right arm to the left cage. I'm getting all mixed up now, sorry. Left arm to the right cage, right side of the cage, or left arm really pushing and casting that right arm, left arm, sorry, wide out to this right side camera view, okay? So reaching wider to your left, connecting early and then keeping those arms straight so really in you can kind of say you know flex the triceps because that kind of shuts off the bicep action um, but the biggest thing in terms of feeling the tension from the ball is going to be just relaxing the arms in general if you never really relax the arms you're never going to feel that pull from the ball if you're always pulling back on it if that makes sense um, so that's kind of the biggest thing i see through entry uh, like i said you're pretty stable I guess you turn with the ball pretty well, but the biggest thing as we go through the next few frames is you can see this bend in that right arm and the left arm a little bit, but mostly the right arm is very tight, okay? The turn itself is pretty decent. You're turning with it. You can see your lower body kind of turning together. Hips are a little bit back away from the ball. And then as you go through single support, you catch. And you see, tight right arm, pulling the elbows in towards the body. You gotta extend those arms out, extend those hands out, get a wide orbit on the ball. Um, and then as you go through double support, you catch, and you do catch a little bit late, but that's I think a byproduct of not feeling connection earlier, you know, uh, towards the end of double support and in single support because your arms are so tight. So that's kind of the biggest thing here is just fixing those arms, straightening those arms out. Like I said, you can think about flexing the tricep, really reaching the hands forwards. Um, but like I said, the, the ultimate key is just relaxing. You want to think you think about your arms being rubber bands or noodles, wet noodles, whatever, uh, colloquial term you like, uh, but those arms got to get straightened and relaxed so you can feel that stretch. And then that'll make everything a lot easier. You'll catch earlier, you'll feel more connection and the whole throw will get better. Uh, cause right now your turns themselves look fine. Like looking at your lower body here, you're turning it with the ball. Your hips and shoulders and everything are staying square to the ball. It's just those arms are tight to the body. And then you can see your hands do get up a little bit high, and perhaps maybe that's camera angle, but from my experience, they do look a little bit high. As you can see, they're kind of reaching up above over your head. You're shrugging your shoulders a little bit. Um, and once again, this all kind of comes back to just relaxing the arms. But in terms of the single support movement, it's pretty tidy. You could step a little bit more forwards. You could get a little bit more bend in this right knee dropping this right knee towards 180, kind of stepping forwards because you see you have the tendency to step around. A little bit better catch here, but still big tension in the arms. And then as you go through double support, you can see it looks like you almost work the hands down. Maybe that's just a result of, you know, the ball dropping. Um, but it does look like you're working the hands down, keeping the arms. And you can really see here the elbows are tight to the body right next to their rib cage. you got to get some space in the armpits. Um, through this second turn, things are looking pretty good. You can start to see that right side taken over a little bit as you see this left foot kind of plantar flex off the ground. But that turn, like I said, you're still turning with it pretty well. It's just tension in the arms. And you can start to see you lose a little bit of direction with this right foot, or sorry, left foot plantar flexion. Losing a little bit of direction, losing some tension. And you start to see the ball actually get ahead of you here now. So shoulders are square to 180. Hips turned a little bit ahead. But you can see the ball is very much ahead of you. So I would argue that this next catch might be the worst one. We'll see. That's my hypothesis. But yeah, ball gets ahead of you. And you catch. Eh, not bad. You do kind of pull yourself out of it, uh, out of the natural rotation of it in terms of, like I said, the kind of hips where the ball's at. Uh, just isn't quite connected. So you land, and it's a little bit over rotated, probably just after 90 degrees over here. 
Um, and there's just not much tension in the body. So then what is probably going to happen is you're going to pull this right shoulder. You catch your low up on the toes. Legs are a little bit straighter. And you're going to see here this upward pull with that right shoulder. So you're really not feeling much of that uh, left side tension working the ball at all. And you're just going to feel that right side pull, which is why you can see, if you look at this, you can see almost exclusively, like you can see your legs working up, extending upwards, which isn't necessarily the best thing, uh, especially when you do it a little bit too early. But the biggest thing here is I see still tension in the arms, that right shoulder is pulling up. You're trying to really heave the finish instead of just kind of turning and letting go. Uh, and that right side pulls back and you kind of peel off and finish a little bit too early because you're just a little bit too antsy. Like I said, this extension in the legs, that's not a bad thing. It's just a bad thing when it happens too early, which is exactly what is happening. You don't really want those legs to extend probably until, let's say, the ball reaches 270 over to your right side, uh, where you start extending as soon as you catch this final turn. Those legs extend up and you pull, and then it kind of clips the cage, as you can see right there. So, yeah, uh, biggest thing, as we've established, is straighten the arms out, relax the arms, open up more to the left and set up that connection like i said to find that tension from the hammer you have to relax the arms or at the very least straighten the arms whether it's actively or passively it doesn't matter anything that you do like i said active or passive is going to be a step forwards maybe active is the next step and then finally you know a few weeks down the line you learn how to properly relax the arms um maybe you could do some grip training i don't know or like i said get some chalk get some tacky get something um i think handball tacky is pretty popular over in the UK. So maybe you get some of that, put it on your hands, put it on your glove, and then it'll help uh, your grip and you can relax your arms a little bit more and feel a little stretchier and feel more tension from the ball. And with that, things like your single support movement and your catches in each turn will get better. So yeah, just gotta relax the arms. Like I said, maybe keep the ball up and out a little bit more. You can think about having the hands more, let's say uh, chest height, whereas you can see in double support when you catch. So the hands are a little bit low down towards the hips. If you keep the ball up and out and away from the body you got to feel that centripetal force so yeah not bad though like you say you're getting back into it 40 years old not bad at all okay so good job try some things out hopefully this helps if anybody else out there wants this sort of knowledge about their own technique then uh reach out like i said grip and rip co you can send me an email at sean at grip and rip co or hit me up on instagram SD throws or grip and rip dot co on Instagram. So thank you for watching until next time. Have a phenomenal day. Bye-bye.